Chapter 13 Fallout The aftermath was drawn out and unbearable. The police came. The doctor came. Old Peggy from next door hung around and told everyone who would give her half a moment's attention how she'd always known it would happen. He was hurting and sick and almost fainted in the bathroom. Dean came in and awkwardly patted his shoulder, helped him up. The police asked questions. They sent Linda out. They took pictures and they covered the bodies. They asked more questions. In between, the doctor stitched his forehead up and he threw up again halfway through. He had broken ribs. The bones in his one hand were broken. That got taped up. The doctor gave him pulls. Linda gave him sweet tea. The police came back. They asked him if he'd seen Jackman. They took the cash and the rifle. It was very late when Linda took him by the arm and led him out to their car. He stumbled on the way and Dean put his arm around him to steady him. They took him to their house. Linda ran a bath. Dean brought him clean clothes. They showed him the guest room. He was so numb, he went and did as they guided him. Linda came and sat on his bed, soothing like he was a small child. He didn't take in what she said, but her voice was comforting. She stroked his hair. He finally fell into a deep sleep. The next morning, the painkillers had worn off and he woke in a haze of pain. His body felt broken. His head was splitting and the worst was the tearing, hollow pain in his chest that had very little to do with his ribs. He managed to shuffle to the bathroom and slowly back to the guest bedroom again. It was later than he'd thought. The sun was up high in the sky. He was hot all over, then cold again. Linda heard him and brought him coffee and toast. She took one look and brought him painkillers. He felt better for a while and then the chills came back more violently. By lunchtime he was very ill. The doctor came, gave him some more pills and he fell asleep. He was in and out of it for days. Something had gone out of him. He was hanging in an in-between state, strange shapes shifting in front of his eyes. He thought he saw his mother sometimes. Dean came in and sat down, mug of coffee in hand. He studied the boy lying like life had already mostly gone. Linda had been crying when he came home. They were losing him, she said. His wife's tears shook him. She never cried. She was right. It was plain to see. He sipped his coffee and thought. He got up, shut the door, sat back down next to the bed. He picked up Danny's left hand. It was the one that didn't have broken bones. The swelling had gone down, but the bruising was yellow and blue and the knuckles were skinned. He carefully held it, trying to get the message through that there were still people who cared. Danny, I've got things to tell you and you don't have to talk, but you have to listen, son. He took a deep breath. They caught Jackman and he talked. He was there when it happened. He talked a lot. Very little of what I'm going to say to you now will be bearable for either of us. But what you lived through wasn't bearable and you deserve the truth. The police know what happened and they know that you hit your father in self-defense. He slipped and fell and died by accident. If he hadn't, you wouldn't be here and he would be wanted for the murder of his whole family. From the shape you're in, he was going to kill you if you hadn't fought back. Son, he killed your mom and you stopped him from killing you. He wouldn't have stopped and you know that. There's no inquest. Jackman spoke up and your statement was pretty clear. You're in the clear. Danny, my boy, you have to make a choice here. Your mom was set on you making a life for yourself. My wife reckons you've given up. She says you're slipping away. I understand it, son. Some people would never recover from what you've been through. But I want you to realize what you're doing. 
You see, Danny, a lot of people spend their lives searching for the inherent meaning in life and never finding it because it doesn't have any. It's up to you to give meaning to everything. I think if you give up, everyone loses. Your dad loses because he tossed it all away and he's dead. Your mom loses because she died for her love of you. Jackman said Archie wanted to know where you were and your mom said he was to leave you alone and get out of your lives. You lose the chance to make good on any sacrifices, promises, dreams. You lose the chance to make sense of it. The boy lay dead quiet against the pillow, his eyes closed. Dean didn't know if he had any effect, if he was even conscious. Danny. He rubbed the boy's skin-bruised hand awkwardly. Danny, no one would judge if you couldn't continue, if you gave up. But I've known you years now. I've taught you for years, and I think you have it in you to turn back and give meaning to this. It's got to be your choice. But I think you should turn back and try to live as well and kind and strong as Annie was. There was no movement. He sighed. It was then that he saw the silent tears escape from under the long dark lashes. He got up, squeezed Annie's shoulder, and quietly walked out.